Welcome to Making Change Happen, a new video series geared at educating users about standard change makers, products, and optional features. Today we are looking at the programming steps for the remote notification feature. This feature is included in our EF Plus module and the SC conversion controllers. When looking at the devices, you see a similar setup, a green two-line LCD display at top, and input buttons, all in a steel enclosure. On the sides and bottom, we have various connections. It's these connections that differentiate the SC conversion controller from the EF Plus module. But one of the things they both have in common is an Ethernet port. You plug a Cat5 cable with an RJ45 connector into that port and your network router. There's no programming changes required on your router. The device simply uses the router to get access to the internet. Today we're working with the SC conversion controller on this test stand. The SC conversion kit is sold to update older System 500 and 600 bill acceptors. The menu system is very similar and the notification steps are the same in both. The LCD display shows where you are in the menu, what you are entering, and what has already been programmed into the device. The input buttons consist of four directional arrows, left and right to the various top level menu items, such as audit report, bill VIN settings, configuration report, and so on. The up and down arrows allow you to scroll within these top level menu items. The top level menu items are set up in a loop. You can just keep pushing the right or left button and continue to scroll through the menu items. It will start over again when you reach the last item. But when scrolling up and down through the menu items, you get to an end of settings point and you must scroll back up or press the exit button to return to that top level menu item. And if you press exit a second time, you are returned to the main menu. It's important to note that once you press a direction arrow button, you are taking the machine offline or out of service. No one will be able to use the change machine when you are checking reports or configuration settings. When you are finished, be sure to push the exit button until you return to the main menu to bring the machine back online. Let's begin the process of setting up a cell phone address in the device. First, when you are setting up a cell phone text message, you will need to do some research with your cell phone carrier. Go online and do an internet search with this phrase, send SMS to email by carrier. You will see a page similar to this. In this particular box, we see the various carriers and how you set up the address for sending an email to a cell phone. For example, if you have a Verizon account, in order to send an SMS to your phone, you would set up your address like this, your 10-digit number at vtext.com, where vtext is specific to Verizon phone accounts. If you have an AT&T account, it would look like your phone number at txt.att.net. Armed with this information, you're ready to set up your cell phone address in the SC conversion controller. Let's start by scrolling right through the various menu items. Notice that once we scroll right or left, the out-of-service light comes on. The machine is now offline and in programming mode. Scroll through all the top-level menu items until we reach Email Settings. Once we see Email Settings, we push the down arrow. And the first recipient, shown as Recipient 1, you will see the question mark on the line Edit Account. That question mark means that you must first answer the question with a yes or no response. Therefore, to make the edit, we press yes, and we see the highlighted square in recipient one. We will enter the name of the person or some identifier for this recipient. Let's call this person owner cell 
or cell owner. We begin the edit by pushing the clear button until the line is blanked out. Then you begin your entry. Using the T9 texting method, just like texting on your old flip phone, we use the number input buttons that show the letters above. When you press the numbers, you get small letters first, then capital letters, and then the number. If you miss the letter you want, you simply continue pressing to scroll through again. Once you have the letter number you want, push the right arrow button to begin inputting the next letter or number. Once completed, press the down arrow. The next part is entering the email address, or in this case, our SMS address that corresponds with the name assigned. We will enter our Verizon SMS address for owner. Remember that the at signs and the dot symbols are found under the zero button. Once your information is entered, press the down arrow to continue the process. We can send a test email at this point, and once again you see the question mark. If you are connected to your network router, you can press yes and a text message will be sent to that email address or cell phone that you just entered to let you know the communication is working. The next steps are programming what alerts and reports you want. First, we will tell the device the alerts that we would like sent to the person titled owner's cell phone. Then we will be asked what reports we would like to send to that person's cell phone. The first question is machine offline send email. Please note that the word email is the same as text. We use them interchangeably on the device. An answer of yes means that you want this recipient to know when the machine is out of service with a text message to his or her cell phone. A no answer means that this alert would not be sent to the cell phone. Push yes or no as it applies and then the down arrow. The next alert setting is machine sold out send email. This pertains to the coin hoppers being empty. Once again, you have the question mark. So the answer is yes or no. Then you push the down arrow. Continue scrolling through the various questions on which alerts are important for the owner to receive to at his cell phone. Now we move to the reports section, like audit reports. You can see the heading edit owner's reports with the question mark and you must decide if you want audit counts sent to the owner's cell phone. A yes answer indicates that that's what you want and a no response will skip setting up reports for this recipient. The first option in under reports is resettable audit report also referred to as the summary audit. This is a resettable audit which means that you have the option to reset the counts once the report has been sent. This information will be both the revenue in and revenue out counts since the last time the report was reset. The revenue in is shown as bills in and tells the recipient what denomination of bills were accepted and how many of each of those denominations would be in the stacker box. The revenue out is a total sum of the coins and or bills dispensed. These two numbers should be the same number. If they are not, you have an overpay or an underpay error. The second report is the perpetual audit report. This is an audit count since the machine was initially put in service. It would include any testing that the machine was put through at the factory or during installation. This count is limited to five digits and rolls over. But the reason this report is important is that it cannot be reset. It's used in cases where owners believe that the summary audit has been inaccurate or manipulated. Once again, you must enter yes or no if you want this perpetual audit report sent to the owner's cell phone. 
After setting up the reports we are interested in, we are asked the question if we want to enable reporting now. An answer of yes means the machine is in operation and you want to start receiving reports today. If you do want to start, the next steps in the program will decide the specific day and time you want to receive these auditing reports. Send time. Your choices are none, every day, or a specific day of the week. If you enter none, you are disabling all the reports you just programmed. After you pick the day, you will set up the specific time you want the report sent. You must enter the hour, the minute, and then a.m. or p.m. Set it for every day after closing time, and that will give you an idea of the remaining balance in the machine and if you need to go in to replenish the change machine and collect. Clear all reports. When you answer yes to this question, you are telling the device that you want the revenue in and revenue out numbers reset or zeroed out after the report is emailed. A no answer says to keep the count as it is, and the next business day will be added to these numbers. If you select no, any reset of the numbers will then have to be made at the machine at either the SC controller or at the EF Plus module. Next, we see Send Service Reports Now. This is a unique feature in both devices. Pressing Yes sends a complete diagnostic report of the machine to Standard Change Maker's service department. This is used when you are having some problem with the machine and a service tech needs to see how the machine is set up or its configuration, any error codes that have been generated, and audit reports that have been generated. This report can help them troubleshoot your problem. Here's a photo of some of the data that the service techs receive from your device. Finally, we've reached the end of email settings, and we have finished setting up owner cell account. And we are ready to move on to recipient 2 and repeat these settings. For instance, the owner wants certain alerts sent to his cell phone, but not audit reports. So the owner can set up recipient 2 as an audit report being sent to his email. I would recommend setting up an email address for owner as a backup or in order to send alerts to a cell phone and reports to an email address. This is a good idea as a backup in case your cell phone is lost or stolen or broken and you can still get the report sent to a safe place that you have access. Or we can press exit until we get back to the menu and bring the machine back online. An important aspect of these devices is that the communication is one way. You will receive reports from the devices, but no one can log into the device from the outside. That means you cannot reset the machine from an error remotely. Another unique feature is what we refer to as the quick email report. You can have a summary audit sent to all the recipients set up for resettable audit reports by pushing and holding the number one button while in the main menu. After the report has been sent, you will be asked if you want to reset the audit. You must answer yes or no. If not returned to the main menu, simply push the exit button until the device is back at the main menu and the machine is in service again. This has been an overview of how you set up email and text reporting in the EF Plus module and SC Conversion Controller. If you have any additional questions, I encourage you to visit our website, standardchange.com. Click on the Service tab, and in the pull-down menu, click on Owner's Manuals. Under Owner's Manuals, you will find the EF Plus Owner's Manual and Instruction Manual and there's additional information in there covering this product. We hope this video was helpful. We are going to do more of these videos, and if you have any suggestions, please drop us an email at sales at standardchange.com. 
Until next time, make change happen.